My name is Alex Marufu, a lecturer at a Midland State University and a founding director to Save the Family Trust. Beyond that, we are married. My wife and I have been married for 38 years, and we have been blessed with three adult children. The three are those who are with us on the land of the living. And we want to call it a special blessing that these kids have grown to become adult the way they are. Out of our experiences, we take note there's something quite valuable, certain experiences that, uh, that, that we have learned that we would want to share with you. And if we listen very carefully, there's something that will add value to your, to your relationship. And as a couple, our topic is basically looking at the, the principles that make that, uh, the principles of a happy marriage. And being a happy marriage, there's an underlying something that we need to understand. Being happy marriage, a happy marriage is something, it's a relationship whereby there is commitment, there is love, there is trust, and beyond all that, there, is, there must be good communication. And today's topic is uh, biblical principles of a happy marriage. And by happy marriage, we are looking at uh, a family, th what must be happy, the way there is love, where there is commitment, where there is trust, and beyond it all, where there is good communication. And with that, now the principles that guide a family to finally become and or to work in a relationship better and better. And I must admit this is equally assisted as to be where we are. And when we talk about Save the Family Trust, one of the families that was saved from all sorts of challenges that anybody can face is my family. And want to praise the Lord for that. And by grace of God, we have been able to, 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 to go for the 38 years. And um, one of our key, key principles that we followed is, please take note, that we could also follow as a family, that you and your husband or your spouse can equally follow. Uh, number one, create a new family unit with your spouse. This is, the Bible talks about uh, the man shall leave his family and they shall be united and they, will be, they shall be one flesh. That is practically correct. If you look at my family, uh, my, my wife comes from Buera, I come from Wenezi, but these, we, the two of us, when we met then, 40 years ago, then 40 years ago, we were both at the United College of Education. And coming from the two different places, we still found ourselves into a relationship that finally became a, a new family unit whereby we had to share, and we, where we had to share our values, share our life, share our relationship to an extent that by realizing that we need to create our own culture against the background, against the different backgrounds, we still created a culture that has seen us together for the last 38 years. And we call it a special blessing. But it's not something to take for granted. You have to work on it. You create, I repeat, you create a unit, your own unit. We were saying to the same, the same message to our, to our last daughter, who is, we just got married recently. You have to create your own family unit. And that family unit will be characterized and guided by the principles, some of which you will have to look at what we are presenting today. And they look working, they look excited about it. And this is what we are looking for, for all of us, for all those who are married. Take note, you are meant to create a unit, your own family unit, your own culture, guided, of course, by the principles from the word of God. And the second principle is learn to pray together. You know, when people pray, it's a moment when you bring your thoughts, when you bring your ideas, when you bring your what is in your mind and accepting that God is leading, is going to lead in our, in our relationship. And when you do that, you, you, your, your spouse is listening to you. I am listening to my wife. And when that happens, it makes a lot of difference because it, it brings me to my mind how deep 
if somebody is talking to his God uh, and is developing a culture of listening to the other, by the end of the day, beyond that prayer session, you'll still be thinking of your spouse to say, oh, okay, she would want this and this to happen. And as a result, as we pray together, we are equally sharing a life beyond ourselves because we trust beyond us that somebody that is that our, our God is with us as we pursue our dreams in this relationship. Going to the third, um, to the third principle, quality time together. Quality time together, it practically means it's not a casual time. It has to be quality. Quality meaning... Uh, there is a time that you invest in the relationship. If it means playing, having a game, quality time, the two of you. It, if it means working together in the garden, quality time between the two of you. If it means being in your own bedroom, quality time between yourself. When you listen to you to, together, there's that physical attachment, there's that emotional attachment, there's that social attachment that must make a difference in creating quality between the two of us. That quality time is critical between the, the, the two of us. In fact, it could be a very powerful homework to say, how do you define quality uh, uh, between the two of you? It may mean revisiting that as well to say, how do I create quality time? How can I listen better? So that by the end of the day, you don't guess, but you create that quality time that can draw your spouse, your souls to that moment of understanding each other better. And another uh, principle is guard and manage your thoughts. You know, when you, when, you, when you think anything can come to your mind, you can suspect each other, you can fight each other. You may not agree on issues, but it, all that comes and starts from the mind. And the Bible talks about whatever is true, whatever is right, whatever is noble must run through your mind. As I trust my wife, as she builds to understand me, trust me, in the process, you become more and more guiding or guided to have better thoughts in one's mind. So as a result, when you, we say there is need to guide your thoughts, to guide your mindset, to guide your, 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 your mind to say, what is it that I'm going to do? Oh, okay. Something must be pure. Somebody, something must be noble. The negative thoughts can always come. You know, you know that you can suspect your wife, oh, one, two, three, instant. Why not focus and say, oh, no, man, I need to build trust. And the question is how? How do I build the trust? If I respect my wife, if she, if she respects me, if we communicate better, if we understand how she, be, 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 how she behaves. In fact, take note, these are the two people who have who come from different backgrounds and who must work together and fit in this home, in this journey of being married for 38 years or beyond. There have known people who have been married for next 200 years which is by own, by grace of God. But I've also known people who fail to manage the five years, who fail to manage the year. By the end of the day, they fight. At the end of the day, they, 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 what, they damage each other or they cause injury that can be dangerous to the family. So as a result, we, with our thoughts are very critical to monitor. It could mean and be a topic on its own. How do I guide my thoughts to be more and more positive about myself and about my wife or about my spouse? And another, um, another thing, principle that we need to take note is keep the balance and order. Keep the balance and order. In other words, there are three things that we need to, to do. Three, at least minimum three, that we need to look at very closely. Uh, that is, you have the time, of course, to yourself, the work that you have to, you are doing, you have to, to think of the spiritual side, you have to think about the family as well, perhaps four, or even more. But by the end of the day, there must be a certain balance to realize that, oh, I need the time with my wife, oh, I need the eight hours or so at work, oh, I need my spiritual balance to say, what is it that I have done to build my, my, my better relationship with my creator every day? So as a result, keeping that balance becomes very critical. 
what is it that we are doing to keep for example when i was a single then i knew very well i would do go to school go to go to, to for my sports activities go to church there was no family in the process and it's very easy to stick to my old habits and fail to get that time that I would call quality with my wife because I'm too busy, my schedules become too busy. I have no time for my wife, I have no time for my children, I have no time even for myself because other things can easily encroach and take away every little time that one may have. So as a result, there is need to closely see the balance out of my day. Say, for example, in, my, in our case, I wake up at 4 o'clock every day, I have my own meditation time, I have my own create, uh, prayer time, I have my own, you know, devotion, personal, individual. And then at 6 o'clock, it's only then when I join my wife to say, let's have a family devotion. And for those 30 minutes, we are focusing and praying with a guided a biblical reference and verses to help us build a, real, a better relationship every day. By the time we take a bath and we start to have our water in the morning, those are the, the, the that becomes critical. You get get your water, get your bath, get your waters, and get ready for work. That then, when I go to work, I've done I've done my meditation, I've do devotion with my wife. We have taken the bath. We have taken or breakfast together. After that, one goes for work, I go my way, and she goes to where she works. But take note, it doesn't matter. My, your wife could be, the, may be staying home, or busy home. The way she occupies herself and is just the same as the way I would do to start my work. She may remain to do one, two, three things. But that appreciation to say we are doing two or three different areas that occupy ourselves is very critical. Sharing the day to say, what are you going to do today? What are we going to do today? Okay, we are going to have lunch together. Okay, we are going to... That balance becomes very critical. If we, for example, on the Sunday, we decide we go... By the way, if you then get married, you have to think loud to say, she could be coming from uh, Dutch Reformed Church or Reformed Church in Zimbabwe, and for me, in my case, I was actually coming from Free Methodist Church, and she was coming from Free Method from Reformed Church in Zimbabwe. We had to agree to say, now look, we are going to take this route and go. Finally, today we are going to UAFC, which has become a very unique and a, and a family decision to say we are going to worship within this church, which is very unique in its own way. So we have to decide. What are we doing as a family together in terms of balance? Where am I? Balancing my family, balancing my work, balancing our spiritual work. It could be even go further to go deeper when you look at your uh, doing things together, the physical attachment, the emotional attachment, and how do you then balance all those activities to still remain a happy and a ticking family? Now, on the next one, it's never go to bed uh, angry. That becomes a very powerful area as well. When you look at uh, the Bible, which talks about never be angry, never. It's powerful to never to go, to, 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 to let the sun go down angry. That's a powerful tip of the day. If that happens, for example, the bedroom can easily become a courtroom instead of a bedroom. For a couple, it must be a place where you enjoy yourself, you understand yourself better, you understand the two of you at all levels, emotional, social, physical, sexually, and every aspect of your life. But if we are angry, that's where, one, it becomes a courtroom. Two, when I say a courtroom, it's where the, the wife is answerable to one, two, three. The husband is, they fight. It can be easily be a fighting room instead of a joyous, our golden bedroom that we need, that God designed uh, for us. And you would have worked for that house, worked for that bedroom to make sure that things move better and better. As a result, never go bed to bed angry. There are some people who actually go to the other extreme of making sure they are putting on clothes, they don't agree on what to do, and they may not be guided to the correct thing. So 
again, when you look at these principles, they dovetail into each other. They complement each other to finally become more and a better family by the day. Uh, the next is be reasonable about money. It's money that makes the world go round. We need money to get, you know, when you look at the Bible, I, 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 it's one book that has remained so, so challenging to me every day. It's money that makes the world go round. When it is that, that is a verse, actually. It's not something that comes to somebody's mind, to my mind. It's something that is coming from the Bible. It's money that makes the world go round. We need money. And we are coming from two different backgrounds, where you find your wife could be working or not, but she has dreams about money. She may have dreams about being married to a husband who can do one, two, three great things, which is powerful. But we can also be working, we're a working couple, whereby we are, the, the wife has her own dreams. My, your, 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 the husband has his own dreams to see by the end of the day. So in other words, there is something that I'm saying which says, you are married at, uh, at 24, for example, and you are buried, uh, and you are, you, you are married at 24, and you die at that 24, and you are buried at 60 or 70 or 80. What does that mean? It may actually mean the two of you, having been married on that day, a colorful and a wonderful day. But that is, that is the day your dreams, your career can die. That is the day you may last see your husband with you at church. Anzi pachikaranga, rinonyenga, rinowatia. And that has been a, one of the worst statements coming from our culture as Africans. When somebody is still uh, trying to propose, the moment one wins a life in terms of relationship, you forget about it and you never see him at church again. But having said that, I'm only saying that dream, that, let's be reasonable about money. When we talk about money, there's every reason to now put our minds together and work together to see each other's dreams a reality equally on financial issues. I remember at one point when I, when I, I, my commitment was biased to say, I will see all our children go through and provide the best education. But it had a bearing to our finances. My wife being a teacher at the point in time, we thought we could do, we had agreed in principle that we wanted the best for our children. But my wife still wanted that nice shoe, still wanted those dresses, still wanted that. She says, no, 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 no. This is not my dream. It wasn't within my dream to see the children uh, in the best school. It is your responsibility, Sababa, to see your children at uh, their best. But I'm still. I, what I need is to see myself in the best of what I want, to see myself in the best shoe, to see myself in the best, you know, all those examples. To me, initially, that was almost a point of conflict that we had to manage because I only realized, oh, she was right or she is right. When she then says, it is not her responsibility. It is my responsibility to see those children, so to see these children through education successfully, both financially, because, because we're choosing, our choice were, when we were junior, junior teachers, then and our children were going to the best schools in Muto, Dada. But as we're improving and getting better and better, our children were going to, to Midlands Christian College. And that was one of the best achievements as far as I'm concerned. But it had nothing directly to do with my wife according to how she defined my responsibility. But I didn't understand it initially. Until then, she mentioned it. But still, I didn't understand it. Because it meant she had a choice of doing other things beyond what beyond my responsibility. She says, no, I'm only helping you. Otherwise, it's your responsibility to see your children in the best schools there's where you wish think. Oh, I'm only helping you to see your family at the best property. You know, all that is boiling to finances. But having that, the finance issue becomes key. Initially, you can have a separate accounts because you are just getting married. And then after that phase, the phases that we walked through, separate accounts, took our finances, we, came, we, we ended up with a joint account. After that phase, we came up with a stage where we, 
where we had uh, joined accounts to buy a property, because I remember our Maswingo property at some point, it called for monies that were beyond our income, beyond our e family couple's income. So it was taking practically everything from my salary, and my wife would take care of all other things. Then after having gone that phase, we went through yet another one, where again the dreams were shaping and shaping and somebody saying, this is what I want. The more you share the vision, the more you pick some of the financial commitment somebody has. If somebody has a background of people that must be assisted here and there, but the focus when we then decided we need the properties, especially in Midlands, it meant sitting again together. What exactly do we need? We need a farm, we need a house, we need some, some properties that will see us sustain ourselves beyond our working years. Our, as we go into the next future careers as we define. And currently we are doing totally different. We are no longer primary school teachers. We have gone to university. We are no longer university lecturers. Beyond that, we have gone that. We have gone into business. We have gone into farming. We have gone into this. But all that is meant to improve the finance. We have not stuck to the same approach we had originally. We have continued to improve and become more reasonable to understand each other's dreams related to finance. So there is need to equally be reasonable, to equally think positively, to appreciate each other even in the way we differ in imagining these finances. By the end of the day, we are meant to complement each other, not to compete but to complement each other and become a better and a better couple by the end of the day. After all, the years we are given, the well, years we are meant to be together, are so limited on the land of the living, and we have to enjoy it more. And these principles that we have cited in this year today are quite key, are some of the key principles one can follow to become a better and uh, to get a better fulfilling relationship between you and your spouse between me and my, and my spouse. And we have to be learning and sharing on these things. We are not even yet perfect. We are improving by the day. We just want to thank you for, for this opportunity that we are sharing. The Bible talks about the man sharpens, uh, man sharpens iron. I mean, man sharpens man as iron sharpens iron. And this is an opportunity that we have had. If you are interested in what we have talked about, we will really ask you to subscribe to, what, to, 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 to this channel so that we can continue to keep in touch with you. I thank you.